Blow, Bugle, Blow by Alfred Tennyson. Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. The splendor falls on castle walls and snowy summits old in story. The long light shakes across the lakes, and the wild cataract leaps in glory. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes dying, dying, dying. O oh, hark, O oh, hear, how thin and clear, and thinner, clearer, farther going. O oh, sweet and far from cliff and scar, the horns of Elfland faintly blowing. Blow, let us hear the purple glens replying. Blow, bugle, answer, echoes, dying, dying, dying. O oh, love, they die in yon rich sky, they faint on hill or field or river. Our echoes roll from soul to soul, and grow forever and forever. Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying, and answer, echoes, answer, dying, dying, dying. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Coleridge by George Sidney Hellman Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica Thine is the mystic melody, The far-off murmur of some dreamland sea, Lifting throughout the night Up to the moon's mild light, Waves silver lustrous, silvery white, That beat in rhythm on the shadowy shore, And burst in music, and are seen no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Eagle by Alfred Tennyson, read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. He clasps the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands, ringed with the azure world he stands. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls, he watches from his mountain walls, and like a thunderbolt he falls. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epitaph on the World by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Here lies the body of this world, Whose soul, alas, to hell is hurled. This golden youth long since was past, Its silver manhood went as fast, An iron age drew on at last, Tis vain its character to tell, The several fates which it befell, What year it died, when twill arise, And we only know that here it lies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Great God, I ask thee for no meaner pelf. By Henry David Thoreau. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Great God, I ask thee for no meaner pelf than I may not disappoint myself, that in my action I may soar as high as I can now discern with this clear eye and next in value which thy kindness lends that i may greatly disappoint my friends however they think or hope that it may be they may not dream how thou'st distinguished me that my weak hand may equal my firm faith and my life practice more than my tongue saith that my low conduct may not show nor my relenting lines that I thy purpose did not know, or overrated thy designs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Habanera from Bizet's Carmen. Lyrics by Ludovitz Halevi and Henri Meloc de Louvain. Translated by George Cooper. Read for LibriVox.org by Squidvaj Lakova. The Habanera of Carmen. 
Love is just like a bird rebelling, and how to conquer him? Who knows? Vain his whims you may think of quelling, if he refuse what you propose. Deaf to menace and pleading prayers, he quickly speaks or says no word, but I much prefer when he cares to silent be, like songless bird. O love, O love, O love, O love, O love, Bohemia's child is he, and never had a thought of rule or care. If thou dost love not me, I love thee, and if I love thee, then beware. If thou dost love not me, I love thee, and if I love thee, if I love thee, do thou beware. So the bird, when you think to bind him, will spread his wings and fly away. Love has vanished when you would find him, but seek him not, he'll by you stay. All about you he's lightly winging, he comes and goes at his sweet will. Try to catch him, he flies off singing. Though you'd evade him, seeks you still. O oh love, 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 Bohemia's child is he, And never had a thought of rule or care. If thou dost love not me, I love thee, And if I love thee, then beware. If thou dost love not me, I love thee, And if I love thee, if I love thee, ah, then, beware. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Knew a Man by Sight by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I knew a man by sight, a blameless wight, who, for a year or more, had daily passed my door, yet converse none had had with him. I met him in a lane, him and his cane, about three miles from home, where I had chanced to roam, and volumes shared at him, and he at me. In a more distant place I glimpsed his face, and bowed instinctively. Starting, he bowed to me, bowed simultaneously, and passed along. Next, in a foreign land, I grasped his hand, and had a social chat, about this and that, as I had known him, well, a thousand years. Late in the wilderness I shared his mess, for he had hardships seen, and I a wanderer been. He was my bosom friend, and I was his. And as, methinks, shall all, both great and small, that ever lived on earth, early or late their birth, stranger and foe, one day each other know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. July by Alexander Lawrence Posey Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett The air without has taken fever. Fast I feel the beating of its pulse. The leaves are twisted on the maple, In the corn the autumn's premature. The weary butterfly hangs, Waiting for a breath to waft him thither at the touch, But falls like truth unheeded Into dust-blown grass and hollyhocks. The air without is blinding dusty. Cool, I feel the breezes blow. I see the sunlight, crowded on the porch, grow smaller till absorbed in shadow, and the far blue hills are changed to gray, and twilight lingers in the woods between. And now I hear the shower dancing in the cornfield, and the thirsty grass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Little Rebel by Joseph Ashby Sterry. Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage. Princess of pretty pets, tomboy in trouserettes, eyes are like violets, gleefully glancing, skin like an otter's sleek, nose like a baby Greek, sweet little dimple cheek, merrily dancing. Lark like her song it trills over the dale and hills, 
Hark how her laughter thrills, joyously joking! Yet should she feel inclined, I fancy you will find, She, like all womankind, oft is provoking. Often she stands on chairs, sometimes she unawares, Slyly creeps up the stairs, secretly hiding. Then will this merry maid, she is of not afraid, Come down the balustrade, saucily sliding. Books she abominates, but see her go on skates, And over five barred gates, fearlessly scramble. Climbing up apple-trees, barking her supple knees, Flouting Mamma's decrees, out for a ramble. Now she is good as gold, then she is pert and bold, Minds not what she is told, carelessly tripping. She is an April miss, bounding from grief to bliss, Often she has a kiss, sometimes a whipping. Naughty but best of girls, through life she gaily twirls, Shaking her sunny curls, careless and joyful. Every one on her dotes, caroling merry notes, Pet in short petticoats, truly tomboyful. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. My Books I'd Fain Cast Off, I Cannot Read By Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake My books I'd fain cast off, I cannot read. Twixt every page my thoughts go stray at large down in the meadow, Where is richer feed, and will not mind to hit their proper targ. Plutarch was good, and so was Homer too. Our Shakespeare's life were rich to live again. What Plutarch read, that was not good nor true, Nor Shakespeare's books, unless his books were men. Here, while I lie beneath this walnut bough, What care I for the Greeks or for Troy town? If juster battles are enacted Between the ants upon this hummock's crown? Bid Homer wait till I the issue learn If red or black the gods will favor most, Or yonder Ajax will the phalanx turn, Struggling to heave some rock against the host. Tell Shakespeare to attend some leisure hour, for now I've business with this drop of dew. And see you not? The clouds prepare a shower. I'll meet him shortly when the sky is blue. This bed of herds grass and wild oats was spread last year with nicer skill than monarchs use. A clover tuft is pillow for my head, and violets quite overtop my shoes. And now the cordial clouds have shut all in and gently swells the wind to say all's well the scattered drops are falling fast and thin some in the pool some in the flower bell i am well drenched upon my bed of oats but see the globe come rolling down its stem now like a lonely planet there it floats and now it sinks into my garment's hem Drip. Drip the trees for all the country round, And richness rare distills from every bough. The wind alone it makes every sound, Shaking down crystals on the leaves below. For shame the sun will never show himself, Who could not with his beams e'er melt me so? My dripping locks, they would become an elf, Who, in a bedded coat, does gaily go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Life Has Been the Poem I Would Have Writ by Henry David Thoreau. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. My Life has been the poem I would have writ, but I could not both live and utter it. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Night Fire by Claude McKay Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett 
No engine's shrieking rescue storm the night, and hose and hydrant cannot hear avail. The flames laugh high and fling their challenging light, and clouds turn gray and black from silver pale. The fire leaps out and licks the ancient walls, and the big building bends and twists and groans. A bar drops from its place, a rafter falls burning the flowers. The wind in frenzy moans. The watchers gaze, held wondering by the fire, the dwellers cry their sorrow to the crowd. The flames beyond themselves rise higher, higher, to lose their glory in the frowning cloud, yielding at length the last reluctant breath, and where life lay asleep broods darkly death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Night Has a Thousand Eyes by Francis William Bourdillon Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage The night has a thousand eyes, and the day but one. Yet the light of the bright world dies with the dying sun. The mind has a thousand eyes, and the heart but one. Yet the life of a whole life dies when love is done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O oh, Where Do the Fairies Hide Their Heads? by Thomas Haynes Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage. O oh, where do the fairies hide their heads, when snow lies on the hills, when frost has spoiled their mossy beds and crystallized their rills? Beneath the moon they cannot trip in circles o'er the plain, and draughts of dew they cannot sip till green leaves come again. Perhaps in small blue diving bells they plunge beneath the waves, inhabiting the wreathed shells that lie in coral caves. Perhaps in red Vesuvius carousals they maintain, and cheer their little spirits thus till green leaves come again. When they return there will be mirth and music in the air, and fairy wings upon the earth and mischief everywhere. The maids to keep the elves aloof will bar the doors in vain. No keyhole will be fairy-proof when green leaves come again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rumors from an Aeolian Harp by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake There is a vale which none hath seen, Where foot of man has never been. Such as here lives with toil and strife, An anxious and a sinful life. There every virtue has its birth, ere it descends upon the earth and thither every deed returns which in the generous bosom burns there love is warm and youth is young and poetry is yet unsung for virtue still adventures there and freely breathes her native air and ever if you hearken well you still may hear its vesper bell and tread of high-souled men go by, their thoughts conversing with the sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sigh No More Ladies From Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Squidvash Lakova. Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever, One foot in sea and one on shore, To one thing constant, never. Then sigh not so, but let them go, And be you blithe and bonny, Converting all your sounds of woe Into hey, nonny, Nani. Sing no more ditties, sing no more, Or dumps so dull and heavy. The fraud of men was ever so, Since summer first was levy. Then sigh not so, but let them go, And be you blithe and bonny, Converting all your sounds of woe Into hey, nani, nani. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Soul of the World by Ernest Crosby. Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. The soul of the world is abroad tonight, not in yon silvery amalgam of moonbeam and ocean, nor in the pink heat lightning tremulous on the horizon, not in the embrace of yonder pair of lovers either, heart beating to heart in the shadow of the fishing smack drawn up on the beach. All that shall I call it illusion? Nay, but at best it is a pale reflection of the truth. I am not to be put off with symbols, for the soul of the world is itself abroad to-night. I neither see, nor hear, nor smell, nor taste, nor touch it, but faintly I feel it powerfully stirring. I feel it as the blind heaving sea feels the moon bending over it. I feel it as the needle feels the serpentine magnetic current coiling itself about the earth. I open my arms to embrace it as the lovers embrace each other, but my embrace is all-inclusive. My heart beats to heart likewise, but it is to the heart universal, for the soul of the world is abroad to-night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sweet and Low by Alfred Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica Sweet and low, sweet and low, wind of the western sea, Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea. Over the rolling waters go, come from the dying moon, and blow, Blow him again to me, while my little one, while my pretty one sleeps. Sleep and rest, sleep and rest, father will come to thee soon. Rest, rest, on mother's breast, father will come to thee soon. Father will come to his babe in the nest, silver sails all out of the west, under the silver moon. Sleep, my little one, sleep, my pretty one, sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Then I Would Love You by Joseph Simon Cotter, Jr. Read for LibriVox.org by Squidvash Lakova. Then I Would Love You Were you to come With your clear gray eyes as calmly placid As, in summer's heat, At noontide lie the sultry skies With your dark brown hair as smoothly quiet as the leaves when stirs no cooling breath of air and shorn of smile your full red lips pressed firmly close as the chaliced bud before the nectar quaffing bee air sips i would not know you i would not love you but should you come with your love bright eyes dancing gaily as on summer's eve the stars are down in the western skies. With your hair wind-caught and circled round your shining face, In fashion which no hand e'er wrought, And your full red lips poised saucily, As the slender moon midst an hundred stars, And held aloof in daring taunt to me, Then I would know you, then I would love you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Violinist by Francis William Bordion. Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage. The lark above our heads doth know a heaven we see not here below. She sees it, and for joy she sings, then falls with ineffectual wings. Ah, soaring soul, faint not, nor tire. Each heaven attained reveals a higher. Thy thought is of thy failure. We list raptured, and thank God for thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.